is this whole thing a scam? Do I even trade? Is this even real? Is this money or am I using a simulator? What is the real deal? Who in the world is Patrick Whelan? Where do I even begin? Well, I guess I should start from the beginning to paint the whole picture to really explain where I came from and how this worked. I, I, I promise it won't be too long, but I gotta kinda start at the beginning. So, starting back 2006, I graduated high school. So, you know, I was working construction with my dad. I really had no idea. And, you know, I was like, what am I gonna do the rest of my life? I went to a little bit of community college. I had no idea. Community college sucks, so I dropped out of community college. I went for like one semester, and that was a total waste of time and money and I had better things to do. Construction was terrible. I could not work construction the rest of my life. It's an honest job. I'm not gonna hate anyone who works construction. If you work construction, congrats to you, but you know that it's a tough job and it's not the best job in the world. So I was like, well, I wanna make some money. I'm living in Orlando. I live on the outskirts of Orlando. I grew up in the country, I have no idea. This is literally this little tiny town in the middle of nowhere. Like literally there's no cell phone service in the middle of nowhere. But overall, I grew up in the country. I was sheltered to, to the idea that I live in the country and the country life is, is the life that I lived. But luckily Orlando had one good thing going for it and that's that every single pro wakeboard in the world lived in Orlando. And why does that matter? Well, I started to wakeboard, I started to wake skate. And I started to film and you know, in high school and stuff, I filmed my friends and then I started filming pro wake skaters and how does that even work? Well, I started making videos for this website and I started getting paid, I made $50 per video. I might be able to make a living. If I work hard enough, if I make enough of these videos, even at $50, if I make 100 videos, I'm gonna make $5,000. So I would just start pumping out videos. Every day I would try to make a video, I'd send it to the magazine, to the website and I was like, come on, post this, pay me, pay me, pay me and I would make money that way. So after a time, I was like, okay, I got on retainer for $400 a month. They gave me $400 a month to make videos. And I was like, okay, that's, it's going. I'm making some money now. So I quit the job working construction and I started working as a valet. As a valet, I was working at the country club of Orlando. And it's a lot of really rich people, a lot of nice cars. A lot of people that go in there are lawyers, doctors, people with a lot of money. So I was kind of exposed to the idea of people with a lot of money, you know, nice cars, people that worked and worked in finance and different stuff. And I would hear stories, I'd listen to people talking about finance and the stock market and stuff. And I was like, okay, that's how you get rich. So the rich get rich making money with their money. They're not out working hard. They're just using their money to make money. So that didn't really make sense to me, but I was like, okay, I, I'll figure that out at some point. But right now I'm just gonna focus on my filming and editing and all that. So I started filming, editing, and I worked for the website. And the best part was is some of the comments on the videos. Cause you know, obviously you can comment on all the videos, just like on YouTube, but we had our own website where you could comment on the actual videos. And some of the comments were amazing. Most of the comments started out with, this video is terrible, Patrick Whelan sucks. Some of the comments would say, Patrick Whelan should kill himself, these videos are the worst. And that's just part of it. People hated on it, they hated the videos, and for a long time it was just nothing but hate. It got gnarly at some point. They hated me for actually making videos and getting paid for the videos, and they hated the idea, they were jealous, or whatever it is they were, they just hated the idea that I was getting paid. Kind of fueled the motivation to make money for me to make the videos better. I was like, I'm gonna make the next video so good that there's no way they can hate on it. And it took time and I'm making more and more and more videos and over time people were like, they just stopped hating because they were like, okay, well, there's no point in us hating because he's not gonna quit making the videos. So that was a good thing. Luckily people, they didn't want me to die anymore. So I was happy about that. So fast forward from there, I started to make $800. You know, before I was making $400, now I made $800 from making videos. And I was like, okay, now I, this is kind of a full-time deal, right? I can live off $800 a month, no problem. You know, just learning more about filming. So I started filming more and started doing more and more and more filming. And I started working for this website called Grind TV, which is owned by Yahoo at the time. And we started making videos on Grind TV. I actually started running their website stuff every day on there and getting paid. I was getting paid. $1,700 a month was, I was like, this is amazing. Now I'm, I'm making, you know, almost $2,500 a month just from filming from websites. And it, this is amazing. I, I can actually do this. You know, everybody told me at the beginning, there's no way you can make money doing this. You're not good, or you can't do this, or there's just no way, there's no way to do it. And I kind of proved them wrong to the point that I've been doing it. I've not had a real job, not worked nine to five, anything like that. I kind of pride myself on the idea that I don't have a boss, it's more of like a client kind of relationship where they're not exactly my boss, but they pay me. Yeah, you get the idea. Freedom to do what I want and I kinda like that. I wanna work with companies who want me to be creatively free with them and to do stuff where I'm not tied down and I can just do what I want and that's kinda the best place for me to work. And I started doing more and more stuff. Over the years, I traveled around the entire world. I got to the point where I had to get a new passport because I had so many passport stamps. I literally went everywhere to film wakeboarding, surfing, all these different sports, action sports stuff, working for companies like Red Bull, Nike, doing you know, pretty much all the wakeboarding companies, Billabong, all these different companies working for them, doing videos, making videos for their websites, 
internet, YouTube, all that kind of fun stuff. I actually made a full length movie at one point called Lip Smack. It was my first DVD movie thing. It's on iTunes. It's it's not bad, but it's not amazing. It's it's pretty cool, just kind of action sports wakeboarding movie thing that we made. And you know, over time this kind of got better and better, making more money, making you know more being steady, making more money. I got to the point where I actually breached over a hundred thousand dollars a year from just filming, and I was like, that's amazing. This is an awesome job, and I'm kind of living the dream doing what I want to do. So the internet video thing, you know, it started to fizzle it, but it got to the point where every single person had a GoPro, every single person had an HD camera. So as the internet craze is going higher, the actual pay for those videos is going lower because companies don't want to pay as much because everybody has a GoPro and everybody's like, oh, I can film a video. Everyone's a video editor now and everyone's making videos. So now it's just getting to the point where it's harder to actually get paid to make videos. So I got really lucky once again. I got, I don't know if it's, I, I just keep saying it's really lucky. I got really lucky but it took a lot of hard work. I worked really, really hard to get to the point where I could get really lucky to do this job. And then I got a job with a company called Slingshot Sports, kind of as getting paid a salary, well, retainer kind of idea. They retain my services to work for them, make their videos for all the different companies that, that are underneath the umbrella. They have a couple of different offset companies, stuff like that, skateboarding and kiteboarding companies like that, that I started making videos for, making all their videos for the last five, six years now, making videos for them for the different product releases and product cycles. So that was really awesome experience, getting to work with them, kind of launch some new brands with them and do cool things around the world, traveling, seeing things I never saw before with the kiteboarding side of it and learning a lot about it and wakeboarding and just all this cool stuff that we did there with Slingshot, still working for Slingshot. So I'm happy to have that opportunity that, you know, I work with one of my best friends that runs the slingshot kiteboarding now we get to travel the world and come up with all these crazy ideas to make videos and just do exactly what we want so two years ago i got lucky i got insanely lucky once again I, I keep saying luck it took a lot of work to make this deal happen and i think i really proved myself right off the bat with this company so i go on craigslist i was always on craigslist looking for videos to make uh, companies you'd, you'd be surprised the kind of videos that i found on craigslist i actually one time filmed a reality tv show off an ad on Craigslist for a TV show. Bubba's World, I filmed James Stewart for the TV show. It was all off of Craigslist. I found the ad on there looking for a cameraman and I got a, a job off of Craigslist filming a reality TV show. I went on Craigslist, I saw an ad looking for a social media manager for a drone company. I was like, oh, that's that's weird. Okay, so I, I hit the drone company up and I was like, hey, I can run some social media. I mean, I, I have my own social media, it's pretty good. I, I've been doing other stuff with Slingshot and companies. I ran the wakeboarding magazines, social media. So I know about social media. I can do that. After talking to the, the owner of the company and really kind of selling him on the idea that, hey, I don't want to work nine to five, but I will work harder than nine to five. I will work, you know, 24 hours a day when it comes down to it. I will always be on the clock, but I'm not going to come to the office. I'm not really going to have rules of when I need to be there and all that stuff, but I will work harder than anyone else that you pay nine to five. And that's kind of how it worked out. So luckily, for the last two years almost, I've been working for drone nerds now, running their social media, running their YouTube, doing stuff like that, producing videos, and also creating some content for some clients and stuff for them. So it's been pretty awesome. When I first started working with them, they had a thousand subscribers on their Instagram. And now we have 175,000 subscribers. So a huge jump there in the last two years, basically just growing it organically, working with some professional athletes, doing some giveaways, and just growing it slowly, producing content, posting content every single day, finding the best content and just curating it all and keeping it very high quality and pretty much grown the Drone Nerds brand from the point of small time company that was selling products to the point where we are the world's largest drone distributor and retail store online. And we have a retail store in South Florida here. So it's pretty awesome to see that growth there in the last two years. I'm not taking full credit for it by any means, but obviously working hard with Instagram, posting every single day and being consistent with the best quality content has promoted drone nerds to the point where now it's the largest Instagram drone page in the world. They're on Instagram, you know, at drone nerds. Check it out if you're interested in drones. And we also have a YouTube channel that's growing rapidly. Some great videos on there talking about drones and some of the videos traveling the world that I've filmed. So earlier I talked to you about how I was working on the country club and people talking about the stock market. So this whole time I'm doing all this filming, editing, and kind of making money, really not having any idea how to save money, not having any idea how to put money in the bank, I would just buy stuff, buy, 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 buy cars, trucks, and all, just travel and just blow all my money. I'd go out and spend $1,000 at the strip club in one night. Like it was no big deal because, you know, I was making a lot of money at the time, but I had no idea 
really how to grow that money, how to invest that money. At the beginning of last year, I kind of got more and more interested in the stock market and I started learning about the stock market and I actually went and opened a E-Trade account because I was like, well, I'm gonna start buying and selling stocks. So I really started learning about day trading and the idea that I would buy and sell stocks. I wasn't buying as rapidly, but I was buying kind of the bigger name stocks. I bought a company called Fitbit right before their ER. I was like, this is amazing, it's going up. It was like up like 15% on the day for going into their ER. And then after the ER came out, it crashed like 30, 40%, almost in half. And it was like, whoa, I had no idea really what I was doing. So I needed to learn more and I started to research and learn and absorb anything and everything that I could about day trading in the last year and just really focusing on learning about it. All of last year, I really had no idea. I was just like, what is going on? I would buy a stock, it would crash. And I had no idea. I had just, I didn't know how to understand candles or charts. I was using Robinhood. I didn't know what I was doing. Kept learning, kept learning. I learned about small cap runners. I learned about stock twits. I would go on stock twits and read about stocks learn about news coming out, stuff like that, learning about biotechs. I started a couple of different chat rooms, learning, talking to people in there and learning more and more about stocks. I traded, you know, all kinds of different things. I was trading Nugget and Dust for a while. I thought I would really figured out the gold world. And then at one point I was doing the oil three times ETF, DWTI, UWTI, making money there on the big swings, but also losing money because it was such a volatile time last year with oil. I even thought at one point that I had mastered TVIX. I got lucky a couple times with TVIX. I had no idea really what it even was. I was like, oh, this, this is kind of crazy. Like it kind of tracks the stock market. So I bought TVIX a couple times and lost money, made money, and it just had no idea. Well, the end of last year, middle of last year, I learned about this chat room, this guy supposedly who knew everything about stocks and small caps and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, well, I tried it out. And it was like, it worked out pretty good. The chat room worked really well. There were some great members in there who had a lot of information, asking questions and learning, talking to people and kind of getting an idea how it all works. So over the last six, seven, you know, eight months, I started to really get into it and learn and try to learn everything I can and read everything and go online and just watch videos and absorb it, everything that I can. At the beginning of this year, I felt pretty good about it. I felt like I had an idea how it all worked and the mechanics of day trading, the actual idea of using a broker, like short trader, stuff like that, margin, all that kind of stuff, figuring it all out. So beginning of this year, I started really kind of getting into day trading, every single day trading. I was trading a bunch last year, but it was kind of off and on. I would travel, I wouldn't trade, I would come back, travel, I would lose, I wouldn't want to trade. And then it was just a big emotional roller coaster ride. And beginning of this year, I was like, okay, this is the year. I'm gonna really go at it. I'm gonna go in with the plan. I'm gonna, I know the rules now. I know what to do. I know the idea. I know the theory of it. I know how I need to do it. I, I just need to focus. I need to get down and dirty and really roll up my sleeves here and learn everything that I can about day trading. So that's really what happened there. In January, I got down to it, trading and learning everything I can. So then I thought maybe I'll start a YouTube channel because if I start a YouTube channel, I can kind of learn from my own mistakes. So it's been an awesome experience. You know, a lot of the people on here on the YouTube have been supportive and people have actually gave me ideas or criticism that has helped me grow as a trader. So it's been great to kind of see everything going on. I also started have a thousand dollar challenge, growing a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars, and then just trying to learn and focus my skills. And so with the channel, it's awesome for you guys to kind of see that progress. Hopefully everyone's kind of progressing with me. That's a cool thing as well. I've seen other channels, I've seen other day traders that make videos and they're just terrible. They just sound like a robot talking about, I bought their stock at $5 and I sold it at $7. So I'm trying to keep these videos informative, fun, entertaining to the point that you guys enjoy the videos, you learn a little bit. And I was watching the terrible videos last year and it just I just couldn't keep track of the videos. I didn't really learn a lot because the videos were so bad and I was like, this video guy is an idiot. Even though maybe he knows what he's doing, he just cannot tell me how to do it. So, so that brings us to the here and now. You know, people always ask me, you know, how do I make money? Do I make money just off day trading? I make money off day trading, make money trading. I also have a larger account that I have some long positions in and then I have my small account that I kind of just play around with day trading the smaller big runners if there's a really insane amazing runner that i might buy my large account make some money that way but also let's see i'm trading the small account in the morning and then i have my longs or shorts in, the, in my larger account but overall i do make money off of trading this is not just a simulation i make money off of trading now i make money off of drone nerds with their social media running that kind of stuff i'm working for slingshot so i have like three or four different revenue incomes that keeps me you know, keeps me happy, keeps me living the life that I want to live where I can go and spend money however I want to spend it, buy the car that I want to buy. My goal this year is to buy an Audi R8 as my second car. 
by the end of the year. So that's kind of my goal right now. It's someone said, well, that's a terrible goal that you want to buy a car, but that's a car that I've always wanted. I got the A7, which I always wanted beginning of this year, so I'm happy about that, but now I want another one, and I want a better one. So I have two cars, I have my daily driver, and then I have my fun, fast car that'll be the R8. So that's kind of the goal right now. If I wanted to, I could quit the other things and live an easier, slower, just day trading and make a couple thousand dollars a month and just kind of relax kind of thing, but it wouldn't be as fun as working hard every single day. I sleep maybe three or four hours a night and then the rest of the time I'm working on videos or filming stuff or doing stuff like this morning. I went and shot this property for some drone stuff this morning and then I edited a video for droners and then now I'm actually heading to North Carolina as I post this video to work on a new video in North Carolina for a couple of days with Slingshot and then I'll be back on Wednesday. So it's never ending, but it's awesome the way it's going right now, making money and being profitable in the market, also making money with the other things that I do. And hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos so far. If you are enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you think I'm full of crap, leave a comment below. It's always fun to see those comments as well. I will talk to you guys real soon. Hopefully this clears up some of the questions that people have asked over the last couple of months of what do I really do? How do I even make money? Talk to you guys later.